Hey everybody, it's Jason Blah here. And you know, a lot of times when we start talking about strength training and strength standards and everything else, people will oftentimes say things like, Jason, you know the big three in powerlifting isn't the be all end all of strength. And I will say that at a fundamental level, there's truth to that, you're right. But at the same time, uh, you're wrong. And there's a reason I say that and it's not that those three lifts are particularly special. It's not that those three lifts are special. It's that powerlifting is the more or less most widespread and most competitive strength sport. And it represents a spread of lifts that do give a very good idea of your overall strength when combined together. Um, and it has a lot of specialized training around it and everything else. But it being the most widespread strength sport at this point, that does make it our strength standard. Uh, and I'll get into that a little bit further, and I'm not saying people shouldn't get strong at a lot of other lifts. I mean, I judge people's strength by their strict standing press. I judge part of people's uh, upper body strength by how much can you pull on a weighted pull up or a weighted chin up, right? Those are important lifts. I think those are, those are fundamental lifts. And all of us understand that we should be strong at multiple lifts. We should all be strong at multiple lifts more than just those three lifts. And I think everyone who values strength understands that point. And here's what I would say. Hey, if all of a sudden we made a new sport and called it uh, something else, we could call it explosive lifting, right? We can call it whatever we want. And if it was the strict press, the weighted chin up, and the power snatch, right? And I just threw that last one in there. Well, that, that would still give a decent cross-section of strength. And if that became the most popular strength sport in the world with objective judging standards across the board and tens of thousands of people competed in it across dozens of nations, including most of the Western world and English-speaking world where I happen to live, then that's what we would be calling the big three, isn't it? We would call that the big three. And if that was the case, you can bet your butt that I would be spending a lot of time learning the power snatch. Why? Because I, I want to be strong in a competitive environment. I want to be strong in a competitive environment. Because what is strength? Strength is the production of force against an external object. That is what strength means. And to be objectively strong compared to other people, to be stronger, not just strong, stronger, or to know how you rank up, because that's what we're looking at for strength sports, and that's what we're looking at with strength standards. How do you stack up? How is your training? How is your development? How are your results compared to other people in an objective manner? Then we, we need to be good at the competitive lifts that have objective judging standards. And what do we have with powerlifting? We have three lifts, two of which use most of the body. Three lifts, the squat, the bench, and the deadlift that have specific rules of competition to determine if your lift is valid or not. Right? You have a specific range of motion you have to reach on all these lifts. What do you have to do on the squat? You have to, under your own control, unrack the bar. Well, unless you use a monolift, which it unracks it for you. You have to squat down to parallel, which has a very specific competition standard, which means your hip, the crease in your hip, has to drop below the top of your knee. And then you have to stand back up with it without any up and down of the bar, right? You have to maintain control of the bar. It can't dip up or down. And that's one thing people miss with the power lift. So they'll, they'll grind something and the weight will tip a little bit on one side. That's it. You're eliminated. That doesn't count. What do we have the, with the bench press? You have to lower the bar. It has to pause on your chest to a dead stop till the judge gives a, a up command. And then you have to lock it out without your butt leaving the bench and without your feet moving, without any up and down of the bar and without heaving the weight, right? And neither side of the bar can tip until it's locked out where your elbows lock. What's the deadlift? You have to lift a barbell off the floor with no hitching no pressing against the leg and no bouncing on the way up or at any point during the lift can't bounce it 
until your shoulders lock back at the top. Your knees have to lock out, and then your shoulders have to lock back. It means your, your shoulders have to go behind the hips. And then you have to be able to set it back down while still holding onto the bar. All right, we have objective standards to which we can compare different people. So that different people can be compared on three different lifts. Now, we could argue that the bench press, bench press is, well, it's just an upper body lift. And, um, you know, it's more specialized. It favors people with shorter arms. Well, the deadlift favors people with longer arms. That's kind of one of the interesting things that the, the deadlift throws in. It balances out your overall strength, doesn't it? Because if we talk about genetic leverages, people who are good at the bench genetically tend to be slightly worse at the deadlift and vice versa. They kind of cancel each other out in terms of, of leverages, don't they? So if you can, to be good at both, you have to be really strong, right? You have to be legitimately strong. Some dude with, with ape arms is going to have a good deadlift while being bad at the other two. A guy with really, really short arms is going to really struggle to get his deadlift up, but the bench will come easy to him, right? So they counter each other out. They're a good balance of lifts, and we have objective standards to compare them. And two of those three lifts, which are the two most important to your total, which would determine if you win or lose a meet, use pretty much the entire body. Only one of them only uses half the body, and it actually accounts for less of your percentage and chance of winning. Well, that's, that's pretty fair. That's pretty fair. And we have strength and conditioning standards for these lifts, and we can compare different people. We have formulas determined to roughly determine relative strength in people in different weight classes. We have Wilk scores. We have other scores, things like that, to help determine if a person is relatively strong, stronger than another because we know body weight multipliers don't work for that. They favor short people, and they, they disparage tall people. So no one uses those. We have formulas for that, and therefore we can compare the amount of strength different people have. Because strength is what? The production of force against an external object. I mean, if we wanted to pick just one lift to determine strength, deadlift would probably be it. Although, again, it favors people with longer arms. But the point is, we have an extremely popular, extremely popular strength sport that uses three different exercises as a proxy for strength. Now, we could argue reasonably that some of those have ambiguous range of motion. Why parallel on the squat? Why with deadlifts do we have to use standardized plates at that height? Couldn't it be three inches lower or three inches higher? Sure it could. But that is what we have as a standardization for strength in a competitive environment. So yes, they are very much a proxy for determining how strong you are. Does that make them the be-all, end-all? No. But it damn sure tells you a lot about comparing two different people's strength, doesn't it? You could take their, their three power lifts or what they lift in a competitive environment under, under those rules. It doesn't have to be at a comp, but under those same rules. And you could determine roughly if a person is stronger than another. It is a good comparison. It's a valid comparison of strength. And I'm not necessarily saying that because I'm a power lifter. I'm a power lifter because I like strength. I'm a power lifter because I want to do strength in a competitive environment, and that happens to be the largest field available to do so. Let me state that again. If strength lifting, which is a smaller strength sport, much, much smaller, became the dominant strength sport, that's where I would go compete. That's where I would put my focus. That's what we would be talking about, and rightly so. Why? because it would be the most popular, most widespread strength sport with a set of strength standards. Does it make it right now better or worse than powerlifting for this? No, it just has slightly different lifts, slightly different sets of rules, slightly different rules for weight classes, but it makes everyone follow the exact same rules. Again, it sets up a standardization for determining strength between two different individuals to where we can have an apples to apples comparison of their strength. So, so all of these things are valid comparisons of strength. And, and it's always interesting to me that people don't seem to grasp that. Um, just like we could say that uh, in America, there's a couple different good judges of overall athleticism as far as athletics go, right? We could say basketball, right? We could determine someone's a pretty good athlete by how good they are at basketball or how good they are at football. 
or baseball because these are the most popular the most popular team sports in one of the biggest most wealthiest countries in the world uh, in which there's a lot of money involved and in which there's a lot of comparison and competition therefore they're good judges they're good proxies for determining a person's overall athleticism in a competitive environment and that should make sense to people when you look at it from that perspective whereas in more at the world level it might be something closer to soccer or it's a lot of people would call football different from American football it, it's a proxy for a set of skills in that case maybe athleticism overall athleticism through a number of different domains powerlifting is a good judge because of the large-scale competitive nature and structured rules of it of determining the strength of an individual one specific performance attribute and so yeah it kind of is the be-all end all of it purely for that reason and if three other exercises were picked three completely different exercises and that was the most popular strength sport with standardized rules, then we would use those three instead. And I would be totally happy with that. And anyone who's reasonable would be happy with that as well. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.